Hey, how's it going everyone? Just back in with another, um, I wouldn't say this is a lesson. This is just kind of just reflecting on my um, time on YouTube. Um, uh, it's been over four years, you know, and so I was just looking at the first video that I posted. And um, I think I deleted the first couple that were in July of 2017. But, you know, it's been over four years, you know, that I've been on YouTube um, searching for the truth. And uh, it's an amazing journey, you know. And then also for people um, who aren't aware, I made a prediction that um, I would destroy the Bible after uh, 2023, you know, if um, effectively if Christ didn't return, you know, by that time. And um, I made this statement on either non sequitur or um, fight the flat earth or godless engineers channel, one of those three. And, uh, you know, it's just looking back, like at that time, uh, I was still very early in the flat earth because I was going on those debates. And, um, you know, I was not uh, what I believe sealed, you know, with the truth on January 1st, 2020. And so it was prior to that. So it was, um, you know, early 2019, uh, late 2018 that I made that prediction. So, um, or I guess that's not really a prediction, uh, a promise, you know, and all that. So I just want people to know at that time, I knew that I wasn't going to be on the earth in 2024. So just know that. So, and I know that now with like, without a doubt, it's not, it's impossible. And so um, I had no plans to ever do that. And so um, it was a, a padded <laughs> prediction. Okay. And so it's even more padded now, okay? Because um, this this is it, you know, for sure, for me personally. So just know that, okay? I would never, you know, do that. But the, the quote, spirit of it is true, you know, and I stand by it that um, the Bible is bringing a lot of confusion, but we know that because God is behind it. Job twelve sixteen, the deceived and the deceiver are his. And then obviously it can bring a lot of righteousness as well, you know, for people who trust on it and lean on it, you know, and then believe what it says you know is going to come true and we see it now very clearly and so uh, it's amazing so you know it's um it's responsibility is to do both you know at the same time contemporaneously and so i know that now you know much more than i did then but i was frustrated you know like i think a lot of people are that there are no answers you know and all that kind of stuff and just the world was just appearing more and more evil and then now i see it you know much more clearly than even then and i was frustrated then okay and so this is exciting. <laughs> you know, I just want people to know this is absolutely amazing. And so, um, of course, I stand by that prediction. And I would say even that prediction at this point is outlandish. Okay, no one, if they're on this earth in 2024, should take the Bible seriously, you know, because um, then it would not have come through on the on anything. Okay, so if there's no appearance or intervention from the spirit realm, you know, by that time, January 1st, 2024, it's just, I would treat the Bible as just um, maybe use it for history, you know, and that kind of thing, and then for inspiration. And then it would just be um, essentially an inspirational book, you know, and that kind of thing. Um, or just treat it as like maybe even science fiction, you know, because we know that it has a lot of things about UFOs and stuff in it. So uh, it'd just be an interesting read kind of thing. So that's, uh, that's where we're at, you know, because the God of the Bible makes a bold claim, which I'm even more aware of now than ever, is that he's behind the evil and the deception, you know, the ball of earth and then all the stuff going on now. So um, it's, it's, we know that now, you know, he has to be behind it. And so, and then the decision to be against, you know, the ball of earth and this narrative, it's, he's making it obvious for us. Okay. And so we really have no choice, but to do what it says in Revelation 18, four, come out of her mind, people don't be partakers of our sins. So we receive not of their plagues. And so it's, it's essentially, we have no choice. Okay. Cause it's so obvious. And so that's why that prediction, um, I mean, I'm sitting pretty, okay? And I think actually that's outlandish, you know? If I knew what I knew on uh, January 1st, 2020, when I made that prediction, you know, in January 2019, yeah, I would have made it more aggressive, you know? Well, first then I would have known that I was involved in it, you know, and I had the ability to make my prediction come true, so to speak. But um, I would have been like three years <laughs> or something or like two years or something like that, which is effectively what it's working out to be now. And so, um, you know, um, that's, that's where I'm at, you know, it's essentially gone from five years to down to three years now at this point. So, uh, you know, uh, I think it's amazing. So 2023, that's what I've said and it's official and it's out there. It's even on my channel and all that. Um, I stand by that with a trillion percent confidence. Okay. And again, I'm not going to be here, but if I was here on the earth at that time, I wouldn't be a Bible person at all because there would be no intervention um, no second coming, no um, visual appearance of the plagues in Revelation 16 occurring, no two witnesses, nothing, then I'd be like, the Bible's not true. Okay. And then let's just say in a hypothetical sense, like 
I would carry on with my life, you know, and just do whatever, I guess, you know, that I felt was right kind of thing. And um, maybe use the Bible, like I said, but for inspiration or something, but not as um, authoritative, you know, and then not as something that I should worry about receiving judgment from that God, you know, and that kind of thing. So um, that's what I would recommend for people, you know, so this video is a bit of a time capsule too, like um, hold people accountable that um, if you're watching this in January 1st, 2024, you have a lot of reasons to then go after the Christians and be like, why are you teaching that? Okay. Your God claimed that, you know, he was behind all this deception and evil and all that kind of stuff and the ball earth and all that, but like, where is he? Okay, like, w what's the big deal then? And all that kind of stuff. And then it would just, they'd have a lot of reason to uh, hold those people's feet to the fire, so to speak. Where is your God? Okay, and all that kind of stuff. And so it would be like plenty of time, you know, and then you, I would, if I would do that, actually, you know, I would like hold Christians accountable and be like, what, what is all this? Okay, like the Bible is prophetic for sure revelation and be like where did all this stuff happen okay where's the mark of the beast and all that we've already had this thing go out and you know a booster and all that worldwide and like there's nothing okay and so and then there's a group of people that claim that it was evil and so where's your god okay because he said in revelation 16 2 he implies in revelation 16 2 that he will return prior to it going out worldwide okay and then uh, put sores on people who've taken it at that point so um where when did that happen okay and all that kind of stuff and so uh, the people that are pushing the microchip at this point, we know are just actors because there's no foundation for that ever happening. And a lot of them, the only person I can think of except an science teacher is a, is a ball earther, you know, and so, um, and Sakari, I would say, but they're not really flat earthers because they, even from his own mouth, he said he doesn't know for sure kind of thing. Like, so he's, he knows that it's flat. Okay. But I'm saying like actively teaching it, I guess. And even intense teacher is sort of clown flat earth because he's a clown. So, um, pretty much everybody pushing that microchip thing are ball earthers okay and then there's a large group of people who don't even have an opinion on it kind of thing so um you know we dismiss them they're not they don't god's not teaching them anything except that they're on a spinning ball which is ridiculous and so you know this is this is the amazing thing you know that we live in and so uh we know that um you know the christian church are sold out and all that and so like again and then we know that a lot of them are ball earthers and stuff so um you know the, they're we know that they're evil okay and so uh the hebrew israelites we all know that they're um just actors you know i'm talking about the leadership and all that and so um you know the bible's doomed you know pretty much you know unless this narrative is bible prophecy okay and and god wrapping it up because <clears throat> every group teaching the bible are, are all evil you know and all of them are essentially a lot of them are ball earthers i'll say okay so um the Bible itself is in its last days, the book itself in terms of being taught properly and then propagated and then that kind of thing. And so the only person that I know that understands it is myself, okay, because it, it, I was sealed. And so that's again why I know that um, it's not uh, much longer than the time that I have, for example, okay. It's not like five or 10 or 15 years or something like that, okay, because <clears throat> um, the Bible itself is being taught by evil people. And so that also <clears throat> is sort of insurance, <laughs> not like not like I need it, but it's a sort of insurance policy on my prediction because um, I think a lot of us now realize that all these groups are just sold out, you know, and they're not allowed to talk about certain things and I don't know, 50-50 and all that kind of stuff. And so they're essentially, you know, working with the beast, you know, uh, to make sure that the beast wants happens kind of thing, whether they know they're doing that or not. And so uh, it's like, it's clear as day, you know, and that kind of thing for, for us who are truly awake. And so, <clears throat> um, this is the time that we live in, you know, either God rescues the, the outcast, like it says in the Bible, um, or the Bible is not true, you know, and that's that's where we're at. And so um, if I I guess if I would would do something different, um, I don't think I would make a statement like that about, you know, destroying the Bible per se. But I still I still actually believe that, you know, like genuinely, because <clears throat> The problem with the, the issue with the Bible is not being an inspirational book. You can't just leave it as an inspirational book because the book itself makes the claims that it's authoritative over everything. Okay, that's the issue. You know, if there is a, a book, like if you could just take certain parts of it, I guess, where it's just like, you know, do good to your neighbor and all, you know, like inspirational stuff, that would be different. And then you could catalog that, you know, and then like put that on the bookshelf. But the problem with the, the and this is the Bible's problem, not mine, is that all of it says that it's above everything, you know, and then um, the God of it is behind all the deception. Okay, so then if he was deceiving and then not following through on the other things, then he's evil. Okay, 
And so it would essentially be a, it would be a satanic book, you know? And so you can't really just open it and like thumb through it and like get inspiration from it because you're getting inspiration from something evil. And so that's the issue with, uh, it's pretty much all or nothing, now or never kind of thing. And that's the Bible's fault, not mine, okay? And so when I said that I would burn it, I would recommend that, you know, genuinely, because there's no point in considering it and then just let reality happen kind of thing, you know, and then just do the best you can, you know, maybe inspired by some of the good sayings in it. But just because, you know, there's some good sayings in it, but the teaching in the book is evil, you don't, doesn't mean that it, it's like, that's everywhere in every <clears throat> thing that we look, you know, so there's some good, you know, potentially and even like evil. So evil people and evil structures, but, um, it's not like all these Rothschilds like will never be generous. Like if they see somebody like maybe they'll, they'll help. Okay. And all that kind of stuff. But you know, that doesn't mean that we give him like a Nobel prize or anything like that. So it's the same with the Bible. Okay. Like it's, uh, it's, there's no reason to exalt it, you know, in any way, if it doesn't follow through with what it's saying. So that's why, um, uh, I, if people are watching this, you know, you, you can go after the quote unquote Christians. Okay. Um, in particular, because we know that the earth is flat and stationary. And then a lot of them, um, don't believe that, you know, and then we'll get angry when we mention it, you know, and that's just one of the things. So, um, that's, that's where we're at. So the, the Bible, um, essentially would be in a better position, um, to be destroyed than to even have it cataloged because then people could go and manipulate, use it and manipulate, manipulate more people down the road than has already happened now. And then throughout human history. So the, all of humanity is better off just destroying it. Okay. January 1st, 2024. Like I said, you know, in that hangout, um, years ago and so um uh that aspect you know it's, it's a practical thing you know it's not just all theater and all that it's a very very practical thing because uh people are leaning on it uh to uh for with everything you know and then we really at this point either have that as an option or the government you know and then go along with it so and it's a very distinct fork that's being made and again we believe for people who are into the bible not even that deep but into it we know that god's making this fork and so you know you came to the fork in the road we have to decide okay i mean i'm already decided but just for the sake of this argument a lot of people um have a lot of things to consider in the times that we live in now and um throughout human history as well you know yeah, a lot of times it costs them their life and, and that kind of thing so that's uh that's why it's better to not have people make this decision based on the bible going forward it's like just try and work amongst people and create you know a healthy ecosystem you know and ec uh, economic system and all that kind of stuff um, you know, just based on our own, quote, God-given, you know, common sense and reasoning and stuff like that. And goodwill, you know, that, that I believe a lot of people have, but uh, is essentially, um, um, you know, I don't want to say removed, but like limited, you know, with the, with the world that we live in. And then you, we're not allowed to act on those impulses, which are natural to us, you know, being compassionate and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, you know, no, no real point to this, uh, this um, lesson or this um, dialogue here, you know, this video. But um, just to let people know, I mean, uh, I stand by everything that I say, you know, whether I like it or not. And that's not something that I regret, you know, um, I would maybe the only thing I would possibly change is wording it differently is that I would have said if Christ doesn't return prior to 2023, but it's effectively the same thing. You know what I said, um, if there's no sign of God anywhere in the heavens, and now I know that the wrath of God cannot begin unless Christ returns. And so if there's no sign of that, um, then... Um, you know, by, by the end of 2023, then, it, you know, it's, it's dismiss it, you know? And then uh, for me personally, I mean, it's this year, you know, um, end times teachers asking how many days do I have left? Uh, I think I have like, I have maybe 18,500 left, you know, my account right now. And then, um, you know, just cause I don't care. Okay. Like I'm, I let people know exactly what's going on in my life and I'm not joking around about that. And I'm not, and I don't want a penny from anybody. And I don't even want to be here for that time. Okay. That's the level of anxiousness that I have to um, quote unquote cross over, uh, to hang around, <laughs> inside joke, rent time teacher. Um, so um, that's that's where I'm at, okay? And so, um, you know, even uh, this year is, is a bit of a struggle, but um, hopefully it's worth the wait, you know? But for people out there, I would highly recommend don't take the Bible seriously even after next year, okay? 2023 is an extra year of padding, <laughs> I guess, like in my mind, I didn't quite make all these like I didn't have it all figured out, I guess, but um, that's outlandish to wait for Christ beyond, I would say next year, okay? For people who are here walking around and stuff, but um, it's, uh, that, that's, it's not safe. You know, that's the, that's the thing for me that I've realized now is that it's not even an issue of boredom for me, which is the underlying vibe of my entire channel. You know, obviously reading and studying the Bible and then what I received and teaching it is, uh, is fun, 
you know, and um, gives us a lot of hope. But, uh, you know, boredom is the underlying problem that I have with this world. And then the issue now is it's unsafe. Okay. And um, it's not going to become safer according to what the Bible says. Okay. And in fact, it's going to get very, very unsafe, you know, where people are looting and all that. And then read, uh, watch the hangout I did yesterday. And we read a little bit of Second Ezra where it talks about that. And, um, you know, sedition amongst men and all that. So um, that's why my timing is my comfort level, you know, for being here. And so it's boring and unsafe and that's a bad combination. And then the longer that I stay here, I feel like I'm, I'm dishonoring God because it means that I like staying in a garbage can more than being with the Heavenly Father, okay? And so I almost feel a sense of guilt, okay? And so uh, it's not even a debate at this point because I know that a God exists. We're trying to see if it's the God of the Bible and then he's going to quote, move in our lifetime where we see it with our own eyes. So that's all that's left for me to, to, um, to see. And then um, that's it, you know, because we know that God exists, you know, from the flat stationary earth. And, um, you know, it was worth uh, the time, you know, on YouTube. Um, I would probably, if I could go back and do it differently, I may go on fewer hangouts. Uh, I probably would have, if I would do it differently, I might have hosted my own. And then uh, for people only who want to come up with a unique solution. But I realize now that God doesn't want that. You know, that's what I know now is that God does not want the earth shape to be proven or else he could have done it easily with any of these um, actors. And um, like, it's not that hard. Okay. Five or $10,000 experiment using GPS and then get people together and then, do, you know, live stream it and then it's over kind of thing. And then we obviously know that the earth doesn't move. So you don't even need to do an experiment, but or a test, but it, it's clear that God does not want it, okay? He put that Netflix, Netflix documentary out there to create some level of ambiguity about it using like no one shields, like Jaren and all these other ding-dongs. And so that's by design. So that's probably what I would have done, but I don't think I would have attracted people to that hangout because people don't care. You know, they just, they're just, all these people on YouTube, they just talk in circles. That's their job and I know that now. And so I probably would have gone on fewer, but a lot of times I was just doing it to kill time. So, um, you know, it's not, not a big deal. I didn't lose anything in it or anything like that. It was entertaining, but, um, you know, it's, it's clear to me now, you know, like what the purpose of the quote truth community is. It's essentially to uh, make sure the truth doesn't come out kind of thing and looks ridiculous. And then we'll ultimately get vilified, uh, even more, you know, in the near future. So that's their job. And so, uh, that, uh, that's, that's what I know now, but, um, you know, no, no harm, no foul or nothing like that. But, um, <clears throat> You know, uh, it's been it's been an amazing journey. You know, four years. Um, you know, it's uh, it, yeah. Who would have thought? You know, that this is the way the Most High is going to wrap it up. So, um, I would say I, I would say confidently. I think we all know at this point that if this is not the mark of the beast, then um, then the Bible is not true. Hope everyone's doing well. Bye.